Hello! So I just wanted to do uh, another quick video. I've been running a lot of workshops the last week, two weeks for parents and it's great because it's becoming so much more important that organisations are seeing that parents need to get this information about sensory processing difficulties too to help them to understand their child. And I've had parents who have emailed me and messaged me afterwards saying that it's helped them to see their child almost in a whole new light. So really understanding the characteristics of sensory processing difficulties, what it means, and then that parent feels like they're more able to support their child, which is ultimately any parent's dream. So I just wanted to do a quick video because a very common question that people ask me is about how come a nursery or a school setting don't recognise any of these sensory difficulties? And so maybe it's their child is very different or seems very different in nursery or at school compared to how they are when they get home. So there's a few reasons why this might be. And don't forget that everybody is unique and the way that they process their own sensory information is personalised. But let's not forget that a lot of children with sensory processing difficulties when they're at school or when they're at nursery they will be doing everything and anything they can to be able to manage themselves throughout that day so if someone's sensitive to sound they may well cover their ears and show obvious signs of being hypersensitive to sound but they may also just get on with the activities or the toys that they're playing with and just really focus on that thing to try and block out that overwhelming sensation of sound and that might be because maybe they're not aware of that and so within settings, that can happen with any of our sensory systems. So maybe if someone's um, easily overwhelmed with visual information, someone may focus on that activity that they really enjoy doing to help to reduce them being overwhelmed. Now imagine, if you're doing that for a whole day, whether you're a child, whether you're an adult, that's going to be incredibly exhausting. And so sometimes for children that seem to be able to manage in school they, there may be a routine that may help them to know what's coming next but also to know how long they need to manage their sensory difficulties for so i talk about on my workshops that importance of someone with spd that needs to feel in control because they're the one who is regulating their sensory input so in a school when we have routines that may help some some children but also they are naturally trying to fit in trying to complete the work trying to thrive trying to learn trying to do what their friends are doing as well and so often that can mean when a child goes home you will recognise very different characteristics within that child because they've been managing these sensory messages all day and trying to regulate themselves and trying to feel okay because maybe they enjoy being at school and so then when they get home they know that it's a safe and a loved environment but also they can be themselves and so that's where parents might recognise some difficulties with children um, showing some of their sensory characteristics at home when they don't show them at school. Now this can be really really difficult for parents because obviously they want to be able to support their child as much as they can and so in the evenings when a child is tired but also really struggling to regulate themselves with their sensory input we need to make sure that we can support a child throughout their whole day so even if a parent's talking to a professional about their child possibly having sensory sensitivities at home if you're a professional, try and encourage ways that you can help that child to recognise their sensory needs when they're with you as well. If we can help a child to regulate themselves for longer throughout their day, so if we can put in strategies at school, in nursery, at lunchtime, then by the time the evening comes, it's likely that we won't notice as many difficult times and we can really help a child to then relax before they then head to bed. 
I hope that's helped. If you've got any questions, let you know, just send me an email. I'm actually popping out a new guide, which is um, mentioning, going to be talking about sleep. So do keep an eye out for that. Don't forget, we've already got the classroom, the two classroom books, as well as the mealtimes, the dining room book. So have a look at those on the website if you want to find out more specific information. But otherwise, have a lovely weekend and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.